So my name is Jennifer Damani. I'm doing the head to toe assessment with Heidi Herman, which is also a student. Heidi, do you give me verbal consent to videotape the head to toe assessment today? I do. Okay. Um, Elizabeth is doing the filming and she's going to do a room scan. <clears throat> All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. As I enter the room, I go ahead and introduce myself. Hi, my name is Jennifer Damani, and I'm going to be your nursing student today, which I will be doing a head to toe assessment. Okay. Um, can I get your name and uh, your date of birth? Um, Heidi Herman, 71276. Okay. Um, and do you have any um, concerns um, relating to the assessment today or any medical history, such as COPD or asthma? No. Okay, so I wash my hands, I'm putting on my gloves. All right, so patient seems to be alert and oriented based on how she answered the questions. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check your level of consciousness. So what is your name again? Heidi Herman. And what is today? September 24th, 2020, Thursday. And where are we at? My house. And why are we here? For a head to toe assessment. Okay, so patient seems to be upbeat, her mood. Um, she seems to be somewhat calm. I mean, I'm um, a little fidgety, but I mean, I would be too. <laughs> assessment. Um, she seems to be dressed appropriately for the time of day and weather and her speech. She's very articulate, clear, and she's able to understand. All right. So we're going to go ahead and begin. So I'm going to go ahead and look at her eyes at rest. Her, there's no facial movement. Her eyes are symmetrical, um, and they're symmetrical with her ears as well. So if we had an imaginary line, the corner of her eyes are equal to the, the tip of her ears. Her nose is midline. Um, can you go ahead and raise your eyebrows? Okay, and raising her eyebrows with facial movement. Um, her eyes are also symmetrical, and her nose is midline. Her mouth, if we were able to see her mouth, um, we would check to see if her mouth was symmetrical as well. Um, if it was lopsided, it would not be, and that would be a problem. <laughs> All right, so um, Heidi's face, her color skin tone would be beige, like a light beige with pink undertones. She has some primary lesions um, on the side of her face, freckles, some a little bit on her neck and over here. Next, we're going to go ahead and do her hair where Look, she is like a dark blonde hair with highlights. Her hair seems to be distributed evenly. We'll go ahead and check the back of her neck for any lesions or parasites, because usually parasites are on the nape of her neck, which I don't see any. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and do the eye test and then I'll do your mouth. Um, so first we're gonna do um, your um, position this test. So we're going to be checking cranial nerves three, four, and six. So what I'm going to have you do is follow this, the light, not the light, but the pen, the tip of the pen with your eyes and not your head. Okay, so she doesn't show that she has any um, nystagmus. All right, so next we're gonna do Perla. So I'm gonna check the size of your pupils. Make sure that they're equal and round. Also, Heidi's got like bluish gray eyes, whatever. <laughs> so in her right pupil, it's, I measure it at three centimeters. I mean, yeah. And then in her left eye, it'd be three as well. Both are round and equal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the direct light and indirect light test for you, okay? So. What I want you to do is look over my shoulder and I'll look for constriction. So I'll do the same, look over the shoulder. And her right eye showed that it constricted as well. Now I'm gonna do with indirect, so I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna be looking at the opposite eye, okay? Look over the shoulder. And look over the shoulder. So both eyes constricted, both with direct and indirect light. 
Next, I'm going to be checking for accommodation. So if your eyes cross, that's okay. It's normal. Just follow the plan, okay? okay. So both eyes converged and they both constricted, which showed accommodation. All right. So if we were able to view her mouth, I would look at the color of her lips. I would describe them. I would have her open up her mouth. I would check to make sure that all teeth are in place. If there's any missing, I would notate that. And I would also look to see if the uvula is midline. She told me that she doesn't have her tonsils anymore, so that would be a grade zero. Um, her paint, her, I'm sorry, her lip, her tongue should be pink and moist. There should be no lesions in the buc um, buca mucosa anywhere. The frendulum should be midline as well underneath her tongue and also on the palates. Um, also, you would check for, you would ask your patient if they had dentures and they would tell you, as well as if there was any odor, you would check for that as well. So next I'm gonna go ahead and check the neck. Do you mind if I palpate? No. All right, so I'm checking for any masses or swelling. Also, I'm checking the trachea. Her trachea is midline. And I'm noticing as she's sitting here resting and breathing normally, um, she's nor uh, breathing with normal air, room air, and I can tell by her abdomen muscles and her intercostal muscles as well. I'm gonna have you turn around. And I'm gonna check for chest expansion. All right, if you can take a deep breath. Okay, so chest expansion was symmetrical. Um, and it expanded one and a half to two inches. Um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and check her lungs. So for every time I put my stethoscope, I want you to take a deep breath, okay? Okay. Okay, so lungs um, were clear both posteriorly and bilaterally throughout all lung region. Now I'm going to go ahead and check anteriorly. So I'm going to have you do the same thing when I go ahead and place the stethoscope. I want you to take a deep breath. I'm going to place it above the clavicle. Okay, go ahead. And if you don't mind, Okay, so lung sounds were clear anteriorly and bilaterally throughout all lung regions. Okay, so next I'm gonna go ahead and have you lay flat in a supine position. Okay. I'll go ahead and drape this blanket down. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, describe her abdomen. So skin color is like a light beige. She does have primary lesions, um, sort of scattered. Um, her abdomen is flat and I don't see any pulsation. Um, her umbilicus is inverted. There is no discharge or redness. Okay, do you have any pain in your abdomen today? No. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna auscultate um, in your abdomen area. I'm gonna start with the lower right quad. I'm gonna go ahead and listen, okay? And I'm gonna work myself clockwise.
So I had measured, there was eight to 10 vowel sounds, which falls within the normal range, which is five to 30. If it was below five, it would be hypoactive. This is active. And if it was more than 30, it would be hyperactive. Okay, so next I'm gonna go ahead and palpate. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, let me know if you have any tenderness or anything like that. Okay. And while I'm palpating, I'm looking at the patient's face to make sure there's no grimacing or darting. So um, as I was um, palpating, I noticed there was, um, it was tender. There was no guarding. Um, there was no distension. Um, and there was no pain like um, verbalized from the patient. Um, Okay. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to check your kidneys last. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press your kidneys. Is there any kidney problems that you have or concerns? No. All right. I should do it three times. I'm sorry. Did you feel any discomfort or pain? No. Okay, so patient says there's no pain or discomfort when I have to test her kidneys. Um, so that's the end of the head to toe assessment. What I would do is I would go ahead and put her bed at the lowest position, put her collite and belongings um, close within reach on the, the side rails times two and um, call it a day and document all of the findings um, throughout the head, head to toe assessment. And that's it.